Hello and welcome. A new badges here. Seven point thirty-six B. So let's check it out. What do we have here? Updated how vision sharing functions with non-player control units. Fix the Mars facet blood sport and the Night Stalker facet blind boy. Dire radiant buildings and creeps can now be affected by vision sharing. While their individual vision is on length, they do not provide any shared vision. Rules for how player controlled units share vision is unchanged. Observer and Sentry Wars always use the team's vision regardless of the status of who plays them. Other control units use the vision status of the player's hero. Force movement and knockback. Wow, a lot of changes regarding that. Force movement is any effect that forcibly moves the unit. Knockback is any effect that pushes or pulls the unit a fixed distance over a short period of time. Does not apply to constant application of movement speed, wind reduced scale force. Does not apply to effects that move units to a fixed point. Interesting. The following abilities are considered knockback. Arc Warden's Magnetic Field. Bad Rider. Beastmaster, uh, Bloodseeker Spell, Clockworks, Power Cogs, Disruptors, Electromagnetic Repulsion, The Gust of Jar Ranger, It's not applied to your cause damage. So why are they telling us what is knockback and what is force movement? Like, who cares? Like, what are they trying to say? The deafening blast is knockback, but Invoker's Shard Blast should be um, force movement. Keeper of the Lights, Blinding Light, Magnus Shockwave, Reverse Polarity. Reverse, Reverse polar Polarity. Mars God's Rebuke, Pugs, Roshan's Walks, Queen of Pain, Sonic Wave, Headshot, Force Staff. These are all considered as knockback. Pugs Rift as well. And Havoc Hammer as well. Alright. Let's read the item changes. Armlet or Mordigian. Unholy Strength no longer provides slow resistance. Blade Mail recipe cost increase from 550 to 750. Okay. Blood cost increase a little bit. Bloodstone health bonus decrease from 500 to 450. Bottom bonus decrease from 500 to 450. Crimson Guard damage block now equals to 70 plus 2.5% of the caster's max health instead of strength. Which means that other heroes can make use of it as well. For example, Invoker. I don't know why Invoker comes to mind. Of course, it's not a great example, but uh, if you build him as a tank or less track, I guess, because you can buy a lot of uh, items that give you mana and HP. For example, Octrine Core and Bloodstone. So Crimson Guard is going to be good damage block. Eternal Shroud strength bonus decrease from 14 to 10. But again, it's a range hero, so it will be. Wait, that does not matter if it's a range hero. Interesting. Uh, the passive, it matters for the passive, but for the active, it does not matter. That is interesting. Eternal Shroud, strength bonus decreased from 14 to 10. Eternal Endurance, stack duration decreased from 6 to 5 seconds. Hum of Dominator, Dominate now provides the experience bounty of the Dominated Creep. And same for the Helm of the Overlord, Dominate now provides the experience bounty of the Dominated Creep. Quality Locket Recipe Cost decreased from 900 to 800. Yeah, that was pretty underwhelming item for the longest time and a lot of people did not buy it. Only certain heroes buy it and they too don't buy it all the time. So that's good. It's a good change. A little bit cheaper. Uh, nullifier, nullifier duration decreased from 5 seconds to 4 seconds. Nullifier now also slows the target by 10% for its duration. It was kind of unnecessary, but I guess because the duration is lower, they would like 
for the slow to be more effective. They want to add some slow. So once you have Sanj, there's more reason to buy Sanj, you know, because uh, because of that, um, you can have some slow effects, more slow effects that you will prefer to uh, minimize by buying Sanj. That is cool. Ukraine core health bonus decrease even further. I think it was 600 something, 650 or 40, and now it's it was 550 last time, and now it's 500 now. Wow. And mana as well. Veil of Discord magic weakness can now be cast without interrupting channels. Yeah, that is pretty good. Wind Waker secular movement speed decreased. It nerfed it a little bit more. That is cool. Neutral item changes. This should be interesting. Arcane Ring replenished mana restored decreased from 75 to 65. Pound damage increased from 15 to 20. The Lance of Pursuit, Whisper of the Dead, Tunnel Vision, Spell Amplification decreased from 10 to 8 percent. Light Collector's Day HP region bonus decreased from 12 to 10. Orb of Destruction's duration increased from 4 to 5 seconds. Paladin Sword Greater Healing Amplification decreased from 14% to 12%. Armor bonus decreased from 7 to 6 for Defiant Shell. Ascetic Scap health bonus decreased from 250 to 225. And health region bonus decreased from 20 to 18. Havoc Hammer strength bonus decreased from 16 to 14. And Red Elk Cage Armor bonus decreased from 12 to 10. Storm Crafter Bottle Lightning Strike Interval increased from 3 seconds to 3.5 seconds. And Bottle Lightning Strike Interval no longer decreases with cooldown reduction. Oh, that is unfortunate. It was such a good item to have an Invoker with Operating Core. The cooldown reduction goes really well with him. Uh, Marcher's Play Health Region bonus decreased from 5 to 7 seconds. Okay, Hero Changes. Much needed. Some facets were absolutely broken, and here I'm hoping that this will actually make some meaningful changes. Let's check it out. Ancient Operation now skills with Ice Blast, now applies its effect in a 0 to 450 radius. So that's the facet now, okay, or the chain facet. Um, reflective spells now have a 20% spell amplification, affects both counter spell and counter spell ally that is pretty cool mage bane's mirror that is cool now they have 20 percent spell amplification so if lion fingers you first of all you already have the passive magic resistance that anti-mage has because of his turn ability right but then if you click on it not only you're going to return the reflect uh, the spell by reflecting it if you take this facet but it's also going to be 20 percent amplified that's going to be a lot of damage. Decent damage. That is good. Arc Warden, Magnetic Field, Speed Bonus Rescale, 50 to 80 to 30 to 120 now. Duration increase as well from 3.5 to 6.5 to 4 to 7 second. And the other facet, Disorder, Magnetic Field Duration increase from 5 to 8 second to 4 to 7 seconds. Level 10 Talent, Flex Cast Rate increase from 175 to 200. And at level 15, Talent Flux Duration increase from 1.5 seconds to 2 seconds. Interesting. Axe, One Man Army, bonuses now start fading immediately after approaching an ally over the 5 second linger duration. So it was before 5 second linger duration, but now it's not. So as soon as your ally gets near you, the effects, the bonus goes away. Radius increase, 600, 700. So the radius to find if ally is nearby is even greater now so for example if you have an ally dazzle and he comes near you the one man army your facet become absolutely useless and bonus strength can now be broken so there's more incentive to buy silver edge i guess quota blood axe was really strong so he needed some immediate nerfs and i'm glad that you know just they balance it out i don't want the hero to die it's good hero fun hero so i hope they just balance things out Cloud of Blood armor per kill decreased from 0 0.4 to 1 to 0 0.2 to 0 0.5. Oh, that's a that's a big nerf. Calling Blade multiplier increased. Calling Blade multiplier increased from 2x to 3x. Okay. Berserker's Call bonus armor decreased from 14 to 20 to 12 to 15. Yeah, that's more fair because this was way too good though. Um, because he also will collect more armor naturally as he called people. Um, talents. Level 15 talent, counter helix damage decreased from plus 30 to plus 20. 
So I'm going with damage decrease from 150 to 125. Okay, fair. Strong nerves there. Bad rider passes are sinist. Building damage decrease increased from 25% to 35%. They were like, it's not doing enough building damage. It's pushing the waves and stuff, but it's still not enough. Let's allow him to dish out damage by choosing this facet. But apparently that damage was not enough, so they added even more damage. 10% more to be exact. Okay, sticking up Napalm, mana cost decreased from 25 to 22, Beast Master. Inner Beast, active bonus at act speed from 8 to 40 to 10 to 50 now. Call the Wild Boar, Boar attack damage increased from 20 to 65 to 25 to 70. Bloodseeker, let's see what are the changes. I'm really excited and waiting for Invoker by the way, let's check out as we move along. Um, Bloodseeker changes, the Sang... Duivor max HP as heal increase from 1% per level to 1.5% per level. Blood Rage max health damage per second decrease from 1.5% to 1.4%. And Blood Ride damage increase from 110 to 322, 115 to 340. Thought it was pure damage. Our Blood Rage is pure. Bristleback. Viscous Nissel, Q duration increased from 5 seconds to 6 seconds. He was already annoying. They made it even more because they nerfed the other things that he buys. For example, the Eternal Shroud or the Crimson Guard. I'm not sure how much of a nerf Bristleback uh, it is for Bristleback because he has naturally good HP and then he buys items that give him HP. So let's check it out later. Uh, Broodmother. Necrotic webs, enemy region reduction increased from 10 to 25 percent to 15 to 30 percent. That's pretty big. Spider's milk, what the fuck? Heal interval decrease from one second to 0 0.5 seconds, and total amount remains the same. Spin web caster increase from thousand to 12, 1200. Wow, center war runner, horsepower facet, horsepower strength to movement speed decreased from 40 percent to 25 percent. That's fair. Max health gain decreased from 40 to 35. Again, fair change, not significant, but good enough to make it balanced. Aghanim Shard bonus strength decreased from 15 to 12%, and level 15 talent strength decreased from 15 to 12. Level 15 talent double edge strength damage decreased from 35 to 30%. Ghost Knight Phantasm ability, Phantasm damage that can increase from 325% to 350%. Level 10 talent Chaos Strike lifesteal decreased from 35 to 30%. Now, then we have Shen, Divine Favor, region per second increase from 1 to 4 to 1.5 to 6. And of God, initial heal increase from 150 to 350 to 200 to 400. That is nice. I like this. Uh, Clockwork, Facet, Hookup, Hook Shot. Now, Grants Allies hit a physical barrier equal to Hook Shot damage. That is cool. Duration for 4 seconds. Dark Willow. I, th I think most things are lasting for 4 seconds. Most buffs and most debuffs. 4 second and 5 second. It reminds me of the Invokers 4 second also. 4 second, 5 second. I don't know why. I'm curious why they chose 4 and 5 second things. Because you're, you're, you're no, no longer stunning them forever for a while since the patch. was the biggest update to Dota happened in recent years. So since they nerfed all the stuns, so now they're just adding in more slows and other debuffs that last for four to five seconds. I'm noticing right now a pattern here. Dark Willow max also because they reduced the status resistance thing and then made it into a slow resistance only. Okay, Assange. Okay, Dark Willow facets throwing shade max seven increase from 25% to 30%. Yeah, she's pretty weak, at least in my games. Thorny Ticket. Uh, Bramble Maze, additional Bramble duration uh, decreased from 7.5 seconds to 6 seconds. That Prophet is Spirit Collector, Hero damage reskilled from 75 to 80 to 80 to 93 to 101 to 106 to 84 to 90 to 90 to 98 to 101 to 106. Now scales with the exorcism. Okay. Movement speed per level increased from 0 0.5 to 0 0.75. I think she was kind of strong, but now she's a little bit more stronger, I guess. Okay, two, level, question mark, pain. Diamond bonus now always applies when Doom is level 30. Uh, 
bonus stamina increase from 10 to 15 percent interesting dragonite is strong in v2 let's see what they what they have decided to change corrosive dragon corrosive breath effect bonus decrease from 30 to 60 percent 20 to 50 percent frost dragon elder dragon force breath effect bonus decrease from 30 to 60 percent to 20 to 50 percent same as this one interesting dragon blood health region decreased from four to two dragon tail damage decreased from 70 to 160 to 60 to 150 okay draw rangers been getting buff no matter the patch big or small all the time let's see if there's buff or nerf okay draw ranger fixed multi shot being cancelled by shard cast yeah it has happened uh, i'm not sure it has happened or not actually but marksmanship chance increased what in the early phase yeah early phase is kind of bad but i think it was still fair compared this to pa getting crit it's just the difference is insane and marksmanship also ignores your base armor Chance increase from 20 to 40 percent to 30 to 40 percent. So it's the same as the max level at least, but you're more effective in the early phase, which is good, which is fair. Earth spread, rolling boulder for the stepping stone facet no longer creates a stone remnant in front of earth spin. Instead, refreshes stone remnant if it's still on cool down. Earth shaker facet. It was really bad. Uh, Kill knockback max health as damage increased from 5 to 7%. Okay, a little bit more damage. It was bad, but not super bad, but kind of bad because the other one is just way better comparatively. Um, because really it makes a difference if you get a kill by using enchant totem on somebody when most of your gameplay surrounds you using your ultimate and team fight at least that's how i play it enchanters base mana region increased by 0 0.5 face this void this time zone was the worst facet one of the worst facet after invoker hands down it was very creative but it was just super weak now pierces deep of immunity turns speed manipulation increase uh turn speed manipulation increase from 30 to 50 percent to 40 to 60 percent I don't think these are good enough. I don't know what it means. Now pierces deep of immunity. So if somebody uses BKB, you can still ulti them. Like, who cares? Like, I, I don't know what that means. So I don't know how it interacted before. So if you use time zone, were people able to just use BKB and get out of time zone? I'm not sure if that was the case. Um, okay. Distortion field attack projectile slow increase from 25 to 40%, 35 to 50%. And radius also increased from 560. That is interesting. Oscar HP for max blood increased from 10% to 12%. Yeah, I've had Oscar in my team and he was really, really weak. I'm not sure if it's uh, my the player that I had or the hero itself. Level 20 talent berserker's blood region increased from 25 to 30. I think that's fine enough. All right, it's time. Invoker, the hero, that they have just done their best to ruin it intentionally or unintentionally. But it feels like they have, they just, they just hate the hero for some reason. And they just always think that it's way too overpowered. Same with many other players who play against good invokers and they think it's way too good. Or they watch some pro players destroy the pro players they're rooting for as invoker players. And then they're like, ah, oh, that invoker is way too strong. Let's just nerf him. And he's at 40% win rate, 40 something for a very long time. But it does not matter because it's a hero. That is, I cannot even say that it's easy to play and hard to master because it is hard to play and even harder to master, right? And there's even thing beyond mastery is perfection. And you can never reach perfection unless you're using some scripts. Or you're, you know, you're doing some shady shit. And if you're like 20 game MMR or some shit. It's just impossible to play perfect. I mean, as humans, we cannot do it with any hero, but... Invoker seems like a hero that if you play perfect, you can do way more than you were able to. And there, I just wanted to rant, but I rant all the time on my live stream. I do not want to go on a long rant over here as well uh, about how weak the Invoker is. Since they took the 80% Meteor talent, the Invoker's been into shithole, especially him being... And later on, they just changed him into Universal Hero, and then he became way too strong for 
less than 48 hours and they quickly changed that shit not even two days completely people started whining how strong he is his ghost walk thing they quickly nerf everything the cooldown reduction being applied to items everyone was so scared of him just for less than 48 hours less than two days and then they changed it so then since then which is many months ago almost a year now he's continuously getting some weird kind of buffs that nobody cares about nobody asks for and when we get this amazing kind of amazing and surprising patch on invoker uh we get let down because every hero they added like look look at that they added time zone for faceless void cool interesting abilities or rather facets and they added the concept of um, innate abilities as well but for invoker they just left the creativity out the door and it was not creative at all what they did what they did was basically right click or spellcaster and he's bad at both they made him bad at both bad at right clicking and bad at um spell casting how the amplification works because now it provides like he, he was already not good he was okay right just okay uh because it was really easy to just counter most of the things that he does but just simple items that a, a support can buy in like minute 20 like a four staff or a glimmer and if you have the whole team around they can help each other out and easily deal with invoker spells and once his spells in on cooldown he cannot do anything at all right you don't expect him to actually like legitimately right click uh especially when someone wants to play him as as a spellcaster which he's supposed to be and but the, but they're just split between those things and so they part of those split that the people who want to play him as right clicker the people who want to play him as caster let's just create two facets and then just nerf the shit out of everything because now exhort only gives you certain amount of spell amplification and uh per instance and that is way too low and that only works on one guy that you hit right so it's a debuff i'm saying one guy because you're not hitting everyone right you're not right clicking everyone in the enemy team and you cannot do that and cast spells on all of them but rather you can click on one guy that you focus and then once you click you're already casting spells and you expect people to just right click the enemy as well while you're doing that it's just so silly and even if you do that the damage is just not there because they remove the in it uh, not just in it but the natural thing that they added on exord back in the day for spell amplification the exord giving a spell amplification so let's check out what they did big rand already i did not want to do it but i had to base 7 increased by 2 then i experienced from 15 to 25 percent Oh my god. We have to be joking, dude. Base 7 increase by 2? Are you are you kidding me? This is just ridiculous. So basically they gave two iron branches to tell invoker players to just <sighs> plant in the ground, I guess, and water it so they can become a tree or something. And then deny experience was so dog shit that they increased it by a decent amount. It's much better. Even if they did it 30%, it's still not good enough to make up for all the shit his facet is. Like how bad it is, the facets. Right. And this makes me really unhopeful that they're going to make some impactful or important changes to Invoker anytime soon, which is really really disheartening and heartbreaking i'm really upset by this this is not fair uh medigun overcharge facets armor increased from 3 to 12 to 4 to 13 and magic resistance increased from 10 to 25 percent to 12 to 30 percent jukiro liquid frost cooldown decrease from 16 to 4 seconds to 13 to 4 seconds Juggernaut strength again decreased from 2.3 to 2.0, and the mana cost for Blade Fury increased from 100 to 105 to 120. Legion Commander, Stone Hill, Stone Hall Plate, overwhelming odds, damage to the barrier decrease from 50% to 40%. That's a nerf, basically. Overwhelming odds. Aghanim shard radius bonus in dual decrease from 200 to 150. That is so bad. 
dual agnum scepter no longer reduces dual cooldown. Oh, that is so bad nerf. That is terrible nerf. Uh, level 15 overwhelming odds damage per hero decrease from 40 to 35. Flesh rag. Defilement AoE per intelligence decrease from 0 0.5 to 0 0.4. Life Shiller unfettered duration increase from 3 to 5 seconds to 4 to 7 seconds. Um, level 25 Talent Rage or unfettered duration decrease from 1.5 seconds to 1.0 seconds. And level 25 Talent Feast Life Student Damage decrease from 1.2% to 1.0%. Lena Fiery Soul Movement Speed Bonus increase from 0.5 to 2.5% to 1 to 3%. That is pretty good. Laundrude Unbearable True Form Now Grand Spirit Bear plus 10 attack speed instead of minus 0.1 second bat um spirit beers demolish is now increased from 10 to 40 percent to 15 to 60 percent that is way too good level 10 talent spirit bear movement speed increase from 25 to 30 level 20 talent minus 50 second true form cooldown replaced with 150 savage roar radius interesting Level 25 talent plus 150 savage roll radius replaced with minus 50 second true form cooldown. Lycan spread wolves a bonus damage per wolf is now a base damage increase. What? That is that is really good. Lycan is already a universal hero, so they just want people to buy Manta at this point. Bonus damage per wolf decrease from 8 to 26 to 6 to 24. Um, level 10 talent summon wolves damage per wolf decrease from plus 8 to plus 6. Magnus base intelligence increased from 90 to 20. Solid core now reduces knockback effects instead of force movement. And that's why they explain what is knockback and what is force movement. Skewer damage increased from 70 to 280 to 75 to 300. And level 15 talent all stats per hero hit with. Reverse polarity increased from 10 to 12. Marcy, sidekick, lifestyle increased from 10 to 25% to 12 to 30%. Or bodyguard, lifestyle increased from 10 to 25% to 12 to 30%. And bonus armor increased from 4 to 10 to 4 to 30. Disposed, impact damage increased from 70 to 80 to 75 to 300. And rebound, impact damage increased from 70 to 150 to 230, 310 to 80 to 160, 240, and 320. Mars HP region per extra enemy increased from 25 to 30%. Medusa mana pack, mana drain per second decreased 4% to 3%. Interesting. Meepo. More Meepo. Clones now get 85% of main Meepo stats. Is that good or bad? 85%. Why don't you feel like it's good? Was it 100% before? I'm sure it was not 100%. Maybe it was 90%. I don't know. But I know that his clones were weaker. So, I don't know. Hoof damage decreased from 60 to 150 to 50 to 140. Mirana solo for attacks been damage increased. Rate increase from 816 to 10 to 20. Wow, that is good. I may play Mirana. Monkey King health threshold decrease from 100% to 90%. The Simeon Stride. In Boundless Strike, Agnum Shard now applies the bonus damage and slow all the enemies affected by Boundless Strike, even if Monkey King did not leap. Level 10 Talent Primal Spring Max damage increase from 75 to 100. Okay, Monkey King is on the list as well. Level 20 Talent. Balance strike critical damage increase to 55% to 60% plus in deaths. Wow. And that's really good, man. Morphling, flow, maximum cooldown reduction increase from 50% to 60%. Level 20 talent adapt table strikes and duration increase from 0 0.8 seconds to 1 seconds. And talent waveform attack them increase from 50% to 70%. Just making him better and better. But I guess Morphling has changed now, so I don't know. Murtha. Ofrenda. When respawning, Murtha gains effect of Pierce the Veil. 
three to four seconds if it has been le leveled. Respawn respawning with the ofrenda now refills bottle. Seconds. So if you buy back, I guess. Naga Siren Deluge. Mana cost increase from 70 to 100 to 45 to 60. And damage increase from 80 to 230. 80 to 260. Status res resistance reduction increase from 11 to 20% to 20%. Nature of Profit. Iron Wood Treant. Spirit of the Forest. Multi plan increase from 3 to 2 to 3, 4, 5. Nature Skull, Trend Health increased from 750 to 1350 to 850 and 50. Pretty strong now. Pull down rescale from 37 to 30, 31 seconds to 45 to 30 seconds. And barrier increased from 50 to 200 to 100 to 250 for teleportation. Level 20 Talent Sprout damage increased from 160 to 170. And level 15 Talent Trend movement speed increased from 45 to 50. Necrophores Saddest, Iteration Rescale from 7 to 10 seconds to 8 seconds. Health Regen per kill rescale from 4 to 7 seconds to 3 to 7.5 seconds. Mono Regen per kill increase from 4 to 7 seconds to 3 to 7.5. Not second, I'm sorry. Uh, I mean, it was second here for the duration, which has been rescaled. But the Mono Regen that you get is a little bit more. So you get more mana in less time, basically. Level 10 talent set is stack duration decrease from 3 second to 2 second. Next assassin, next assassin scuttle vendetta haste duration increase from 10 second to 15 second. Okay, that's way too good. That's really good now. Ogre Magi chance per strength increase from 0.05% to 0.06%. Fat chance, cool. Omni 9, Omnipresent Degen Aura damage increase. Interval decrease from 0 0.5 seconds to 0.4 seconds and damage stacks now decay at the same rate that the enemy is out of AoE. Oracle. Clear Wine Curse. Spell amplification per level from 0.5% to 0.75%. Outworld Destroyer. Obsidian Decimator. Essence Flux. Mana increase duration. Increase from 7 seconds to 10 seconds. Pangolier Double Jump. Shield Crash, minimum damage increase from 0% to 25%. Rolling Thunder Magic Resistance increase from 50% to 60%. And Swashbuckle with increase from 140 to 155. PA needs a buff on this facet for sure. Critical damage increased from 300 to 550% to 325 to 450 to 575%. Uh, I don't know, 350 to 475 to... 600 would have been better but okay now also provides 3 to 12 percent bonus movement speed while active yeah that's much better i like that phantom lancer illusion damage decrease from 24 to 28 percent to 20 to 26 percent phoenix dying light effects are no longer applied by illusion percentage of missing health as damage decreased from 6 percent to 4.5 percent Blinding Sun duration decreased from 5 seconds to 4 seconds and attack speed slow decreased from 65 to 140 in reduction of attack speed of enemies to 50 to 140. Pub spell dodge multiplier increased from 3x to 4x. Pudge, it's buff please. Projectile speed and cast rage increased by 15%. That is massive. I always wanted that. That is a throwback dude. Is the old hook back? Cast it also increase, speed of it also increase, and damage increase from 75 to 180 to 80 to 200. I like that a lot. Mishil mana cost increase from 35 to 80 to 50 to 80. Level 15 talent mid hook damage in increase from 140 to 150, and talent dismembered damage heal increase from decrease from 1.8 to 1.5. Yeah, because of these buffs, you will naturally have more stacks of uh, meat shield, and then you know. That makes up for it. Going to pain, pretty strong right now. Uh, out, outgoing spell damage reflected decrease from 22% to 20%. Fair, Ricky. Agility multiply increase from 3x to 4x. That is big. I like that. Ricky has been kind of underwhelming recently. Agility bonus increase for the tricks of the trade. 
from 30 to 90 to 40 to 100 and then it multiplies as well so that's pretty cool um okay rubik frugal filch stolen manacles reduction increase from 30 to 60 percent to 40 to 60 percent might and make it so magic resistance per level increase from 0 0.5 to 0 0.75 percent sand king dust devil radius decrease yeah sand king was really good and really okay radius decrease from 425 to 300 to 450 from 425 to 650 no longer cat centers on sand king after bureau strike and sandstorm radius increase from 575 to 575 to 800 that's huge range caustic finale max health damage reskill from 8 to 14 percent to 6 to 15 percent okay worse in early phase and better in late sandstorm agnum separate damage and stun duration are 70 percent of bird strikes current damage and stun Agnum Center Spine Internal Increase from 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 second because 0 0.2 was insanely good. Agnum Center Spine Print Interval Increase from 2 to 3. Uh, okay. And more spikes. Which is good overall. Agnum Center Spine no longer appear if Sand King is outside the Sandstorm. Cool. Uh, Shadow Fiend is buff too, I think. It's good, but it could be better, I think. Level 10 Talon Burst Strike Sun Decrease from 0 0.4 to 0 0.3 second. Level 10 Talon Sand Storm Damage Per Second Decrease from 15 to 10. Okay. Buff, please. Hero Reduction Duration Increase from 60 Second to 70 Second. Okay, duration Increase for, for a while now. Cool. Movement sl Slow Decreased from 10 to 8 percent. Okay, fair. He's pretty strong too. Base strength decreased from 23 to 20. Hex no longer provides bonus movement speed uh, for the facet. Hex no longer provides damage application. Oh, that's so bad because that was so strong. Um, wow. Agnum Shard Separate Ward now lingers for 1.5 seconds after the shackles. And instead of always lasting 6 seconds. Fall play no longer provides bonus movement speed. Yes. And level 10 talent plus 10x amplification damage replaced with 1.5, 1.75 damage region. Oh, mana region, sorry. Starter agility gain decreased from 2.4 to 2.1. Guardian sprint bonus movement speed decreased from 25 to 40% to 10 to 40% now. Level 15 talent bash of the deep damage decreased from 50 to 40. Level 15 talent health decreased from 325 to 275. Dark Reef Renegade. Barracuda, Linger, Surge, Radius, decrease from 1200 to 1000. Barracuda, Health Gain per second increase from 10 to 120 to 10 to 130. Okay, a little bit more after level 1. Shadow Dance, cooldown decrease from 60 to 40 second to 50 to 30 second. Now that's way too good. Nice. Or not nice. Depends on the player whose team it's on snapfire ricochet 2 ricochet attacks now proc attack modifiers on secondary targets oh wow that is way too good like desolator like you know maelstrom scotty mkb deadless those are considered attack modifiers right or just life seal and just scotty real good shit Glancing shot damage increase from 50 to 65 percent. Cool. Sniper needs buff. Damage delay decrease from 1.2 second to 0 0.8 second. Scat for the scatter shot one. And more damage. That's pretty cool. Attack range. He needed that more range now. Keen scope. The innate ability. From 100 to 400 to 160 to 400. Nice. Same at later, but a little bit more in the early. We needed a. Uh, Level 25 talent shop and shadow resource time reduction increase from 25 seconds. Increase, sorry. Uh, 25 to 30 seconds. Okay, Spectre for a second. Desolate damage when non hero units are nearby increase from 50 to 60%. Uh, level 10 talent minus 100 desolate ally radius replaced with plus 4 health region. Yeah, he needs the health region. You don't have to buy anything. You can just survive the early phase and then have plus 4 health region. Okay. Minus spirit 
um, a spirit breaker facet we have bull rush max linger duration decreased from 3 to 2.5 seconds and the other facet imbalance now applies knockback effect instead of force moment that is nice storm spirit base mana region uh, decrease yeah he was pretty strong as well 0 0.2 to 0 now static remnant damage decrease from 120 to 300 to 100 to 280 that's fair seven is above vanquisher bonus damage to stun targets increase from 15 percent to 17 percent for the talent no it's for the innate ability level 10 talent attack speed increase from 10 to 20 level 10 talent warfare duration increase from 4 to 5 seconds Tetris base attack range increase by 50 cast point decrease from 2.0 to 1.5 seconds for minefield temporary assassin refraction bonus damage decrease from 25 to 85 to 20 to 80 psionic traps agnim shard mi minimum silent duration decrease from 1.5 second to 1 second Agnum Shard max silent duration decreased from 3.5 to 3 seconds. Bonus damage decreased from 275 to 375 to 225 to 375. Terrorblade Soul Fragment Conjure Image Mana Cost decreased from 55 to 85 to 0. Talent Metamorphosis level 25. Uh, duration increased from 20 seconds to plus 30 seconds. Tide Hunter Strength Gain increased from 3.5 to 3.6. Trill Eater. Strength gain increased from 4.0 to 4.1. That is cool. Uh, that's not that significant, but still matters. Level 10 talent. I don't know what this means though. I've never experienced this. Level 10 talent gush slow increase from 10% to 15%. Tinker needs more buff. Even as a support, he needs more buff. Heal per second increase from 8 to 20 to 15 to 30. Nice. Will then increase from 20 to 16 to now 19 to 16. Part of the machine cooldown decrease 35 to 29 seconds. Cool. Rearm. Cooldown decrease from 8 to 6 seconds to 7 to 5 seconds. Tiny needs a uh, nerf, I think. Base movement speed decreased by 10. Tree grab bonus building damage decreased from 40 to 85% to 30 to 60%. Okay. Significant stuff right here. Level 10 talent strength. Decreased from 10 to 8. Level 15 talent grow attack speed reduction decreased from 10 to 8 percent. Level 25 talent tree grab base damage decreased from 70 to 60. Troll wall on his buff. Level 20 change from 50 percent battle trans slow resistance to 1.5 second battle trans duration. That's fine. Busper tag team buff duration increased from 5 to 6 second and ranking buddies buff duration increased from 5 to 6 second. It's a nice buff here to have, just like Marcy in your lane. Better chill. Uh, I get it. Better chill. Attack speed slow increase from 10 to 50 to 20 to 60. Wow. Ice shard, agnum shard damage per second increase from 60 to 85. Agnum shard movement slow increase from 40 to 50 percent. Water sponge cooldown decrease from 20 to 10 seconds to 16 to 10 seconds. Underlord abyssal horde archer aura movement speed in decrease from 5 to 9 percent to 5 percent. Fiends get Agnim Scepter cooldown reduction decreased from 20 to 10 seconds. Undying Steel duration decreased from 40 seconds to 35 seconds. Ursa cooldown increased from 14 to 8 seconds for Earthshock to now 15 to 9 seconds. Venomancer Plague Carrier. Wards attached to allies may yield 20% of the gold bounty. Now it's 3 charges. And Nauseous Plague max HP is damage decreased from 46% to 35%. Viper Poison Attack Max Attack Increase from 5 to 6. Neither Toxin, Nether Toxin, Projectile Speed Increase from 2000 to 2400. This edge was very good, the ones that I played against. Uh, let's see. Unfaithful Followers. Summon Familiars. Familiar Gold Bounty Decrease from 170. Familiar Attack Range Increase from 180 to 350. What? Familiar Attack Range Increase from 180 to 350? That's massive. That's pretty good. Void Spread Sanctuary, Sanctuary Resonate Pulse, PS7 Barrier Decrease from 30 to 120 to 25 to 100. Uh, Strinsic Edge, Secondary Bonus Decrease from 33 to 25%. Resonate Pulse, Agonim Scepter Base Damage, uh, Base Charge Restore Time, Increase from 15 to 80 seconds. Warlock Fatal, Fatal Bones, Duration Decrease from 90 to 25 seconds to 18 seconds. Winter Raven, Arctic Burn, Bonus Attack, 
range decreased from 300 to 375 to 275 to 350. Wish doctor, a lot of passes. Damage increased from 42 to 91 to 47 to 95. If you take the cleft death, if you take the voodoo restoration, now also heal the doctor for half the value. What do you mean? Half the value of the damage done. Voodoo restoration deals damage to enemies and only heals the show. Okay, interesting. So it heals only wish doctor but dishes out damages to enemy to change it. Interesting. Headhunter. One is event per cast bounds decreased from 35 to 30. Great thing needs buff, I think. Bonus attack speed in Wraith form decreased from 75 to 30 to 75. Bonus bonus speed in Wraith form decreased from 25% to 10 to 25%. Moderate strike cooldown increased. Never mind, I guess. Nerf. Hold on, increase from 5 to 4 seconds to 6 to 4.5 seconds, and Agnum Shard damage bonus decrease from 150%. Only 50%. Reincarnation cooldown is now frozen while Wraithing is in Wraith form. I think Zeus needs buff for sure. Uh, let's see. But his earth live bar was kind of good. Now, scales with. Thunder God's Wrath. Max damage rescale from 7% to 4 to 7%. 4 to 8% would have been nicer somehow. Static field now scaled with Thunder God Wrath. Current health as damage rescale from 4 to 2.5 to 4%. Arc Lightning cast range decreased from 850 to 800. No longer deals bonus damage of creeps. The Lightning Bolt. Thunder God's Wrath cooldown increase from 120 second to 130 second no longer applies. Lightning hands no longer applied by illusions. What? What? This is absolutely bonkers. Absolutely ridiculous. Lightning hands no longer applied by illusions. So the bug that I was having was actually these guys, you know, testing it out and somehow it actually coming into live game more i don't know what happened because you know i faced that bug i was live streaming and i bought shard but the lightning hands was not working but hey it was not working at all it was not being applied even by my real hero not only by my illusions because the time when i bought shard of course i did not have manta style so I did not have illusions, the ability to cast illusions. Um, but my real hero was not casting the lightning strike by right click as well. So that was kind of odd. Um, okay. Level 10. Wait, this is really bad. This is making me feel so weird. So Manta is dead now on the hero. Absolutely dead. But that is in a way good too because i mean it kind of got stale but i was still having fun but in general i think the meta was getting a little bit stale but he's always been like this though caster so this was a unique thing for him um but it's still not that bad to be able to freely cast your first ability by your right leg uh even if it no longer can work on illusions it, it can still allow you to farm faster without costing any mana so it's fine, I think. Um, level 10 talent health decreased from 250 to 200, and level 15 talent moon speed after heavenly jump decreased from 30 to 25. Well, that concludes the gameplay update patch 7.36b. And I hope that you guys appreciate me making this video about what are the changes and appreciate the developers working and still making changes to make sure that the game does not remain bugged or in a bad state for too long and i appreciate them as well uh however when it comes to invoker i feel hurt and disappointed to say the least but i'm still hopeful that they will eventually get the idea and things will be better and then he will not be ruined again in the foreseeable future because that would be kind of sad um 
but GameCube's changing, so there are other factors that can come in. You can see, like, we were, we, it feels like we recently got used to talents, and some people still uh, were not really sure which talent to get, when to get, um, but now we have facets and innate ability um, dimensional things as well, so you know, game is a little bit more fun, a little bit more challenging. It's cool, especially for the old heads. Once they play the game with, you know, change stuff. It can be good for some. Some people actually say that they leave the game. I'm not sure how true is that. But actually, I am. Some people actually do leave. Um, but, well, I didn't. So, I'm hoping that it will, things will get better overall in all dimensions for the video game um yeah so i hope they keep updating and keep making the right changes to the items and heroes and it's really difficult to make a decision what is right so as long as things are changing i think it is right but there are certain fundamentals that feels like weird when you change them like invoker being a change into universal hero or his eggs are not giving damage anymore earlier but now it gives damage but it's way too low because they're scared that people are going to be upset about invoker dishing out too much damage because he's a universal hero so he will build stats and if he gets a lot more damage from his exhort as well the bonus damage it will be he will become too strong and because of that it's just become really bad and terrible because unlike the exhort applying debuff in the other facet uh, let me show you right here invoker you can see here it provides per instance right so if you have three exor invoked uh you'll be able to provide a 24 percent debuff to um to the enemy right the enemy that you hit but here it just passively grants attack speed passively grant attack damage and it is not based on the level or instance uh, well, actually, it is based on level. As you can see, it's three level or uh, level one. You have three for the exhort and then six, then nine, 12, 15, and 21. But I think it's way too less. It should start from nine, like back in the day, each exhort giving you three damage or two damage. I actually, I don't even remember. It's been so long. But definitely much higher at the start and much higher at the extreme end. It should at least give 40 damage at max level then it would be much better that's my suggestion over here same with attack speed it should give at least 70 attack speed at max level um which is which is like one hyper stone and more uh, a little bit more at level 25 or level 30 by the way so it's far ahead and also damage per second i don't care about that you can keep it as is or increase it a little bit but it's really underwhelming and same here here you cannot you cannot just get away with this that invoker puts a debuff on the enemy right for four seconds that you'll be able to dish out more damage this is unacceptable bring back flat damage increase bring back flat amplification of the damage of his spells per instance of exhort instead of for the guy you hit for four seconds, he will have debuff, right? So you cannot hit, hit everyone and you cannot have the really, really needed spell amplification. And reducing cooldown on all his spells and taking spell cooldown reduction from his Vex it does not make up for the fact that you just removed a very important thing that the Elitist facet should offer, which is flat amplification, which is decent enough. So no matter what spells invokers is using and even items even dig on it should provide decent amplification um and flat life seal is just so weird nobody asked for that i don't think he needs that Quas should just provide region like back in the day that would be nice but if not life steal something else think of something creative um i actually have to go right now so I cannot just sit here and think, but I'm sure if we spend a few days, few hours, or even a few minutes to think about what could be good instances, uh, uh, what could be good usage of class in the Elitist, it would be better. 
And I personally think this one should come into the right leg. So instead of damage over time, which nobody asked for, it should actually, the life seal of Elitis should go to Agnostic. So because you're building attack speed, attack damage, the last thing you lack is life steal. So life steal that you have put in Elitis should be on Agnostic facet instead. So Invoker can have life seal, damage, and attack speed, and go proper right click instead of being in being in this weird place. Like you nerf him a lot, and then just make him weird as well, not stable, and stuff don't make much sense. And here, if you really want, and if you don't want to think about anything, then just replace the class from this to this, right? So here you can dish damage per second um, on hit, right? On elitist. And then that can be further amplified by the exord you have, or the exord levels you have, or even class levels you have, but since the exord would give you... Um, Wait, but it's not a spell though. Yeah, I was thinking if Quas was a spell, the Exord would amplify it, but but it's not considered a spell, the Quas dishing damage over time. Or maybe they can figure it out to make it so. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, consider leaving a like and subscribe. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you giving me time to watch this video. Uh, I hope you appreciate it as well. Please leave feedback in the comment section if you like. Leave a like if you like it. Just like if you don't like. And as always, take care of yourself and have yourself a damn good one. Peace.